This is code.org, and this is the robot face drawing lesson thing. And here is my awesome robot. His name is Fred. Why? Because I said so, and he's cool. I'm going to walk through how I designed this and talk about how to build your own. Let's dive in. So here we are with a completely blank page and canvas. Bum -ba -da -dum. All right, things to keep in mind. You must use four different shapes on this, students, variables, and random numbers to create a robot face with unique and creative features. Use your plan from the activity guide. Make sure you use at least four variables with random numbers to give your robot features that will change each time the program runs. So I'm headed over here to lesson resources. You could just click on the lesson to get over here. And if you want to check out your activity guide or uh, the rubric and all of that, it is right here. I'm actually going to take a peek at the rubric because let's see how we get an A. They sequence the program well and all shapes on the screen as pure as intended. They use at least four different shapes, place them correctly on the screen using a coordinate system. The program creates and correctly uses four variables. All variables have descriptive names and use the random number block to give a program a different look each time. They used elements as described in the project guide, clearly display a robot's face. All right, so these are all things we can do. All right, let me go ahead and bloop. I'm going to start by making a few variables because I know we need them. Let me zoom out a bit. Uh, I know we need them. So let's head over here and do var. Now you want to name these. I'll switch to block mode. Oh. You want to name these something that is that makes their purpose clear. So I'm going to have a variable for I'll just call it skin color, I guess. And I'm going to set that equal to silver was the color I was going to do for skin, right? And then I'm also going to have a variable for, uh, I might call it features color because the eyes, nose, mouth, I was all, I was going to set them all equal to yellow. The nice thing about doing this too is it allows you to easily change and play with the colors throughout. Okay, now for the random number, I was going to randomize nose size because I thought it was kind of fun. So I'm going to do nose size. And then, mm, should I do more? Mm, 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 mm. Um, and then I'm just going to do uh, something called small. Small is going to be equal to 50 because I found myself using this number a lot. Um, and it's easy to have a variable because then I can test changing it up to see uh, how it impacts. Now, math, and I'm going to throw in a random 1 to 10. We'll play with what we want the random number to be. But to start, I'm going to start it at like 50, whoops, 50 to not 200, 100. We'll see how that looks. Cool. So here are my variables set up. Now, when drawing, guys, you need to think about how things are going to get laid out on the screen. Code runs in order. So you want to draw the very back thing first. And to do that, um, I'm going to actually, just to keep mine a bit separated. Let me move. Can I move? I cannot. I'm going to use comments and let's see, I'll say face to kind of separate it out. Oh, and actually, even before face, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm going to do antenna because my dude has an antenna because Fred is. Okay. For the antenna, now I'm going to use a line block and I'm just going to throw one down and see what it does. Woof, that is big. Now let's see here, line, x1 location, x, y1, x2, y2. All right, I'm going to use the grid, and I know I want it to extend out from about here, because that's where the top of the head is going to be. So for a line, it looks like, notice if I hover my mouse, there's numbers down here. It looks like I want x to start at 200, um, and then y would be 100. And then where I want it to end is here. So I'm going to say x is 250, y is 50. That is looking good. Um, I want this line a bit thicker for an antenna. I noticed they don't have stroke weight here, even though we learned it, which I find odd. And especially because if you look at the lesson guide or the activity guide, they have it here. So clearly we're allowed to use it, and I'm going to. 
So to add it, I'm gonna switch into text mode and do stroke. Wait, and it even is right there for us. Um, I went a bit thicker, like I said, so maybe 10. We'll see what I think of that. I'll flip back to text mode. Sure, I'm liking that. And now I was going to use as a shape a hexagon. And to do that, I just grab regular polygon. Bloop. Now, keep in mind, I'm doing the hexagon under the line, right? I'm running it after because I'm going to have it cover up some of this line. Uh, 200x should be... Uh, nope. Remember numbers down here is what I'm using. 250 and about 50 for y. Uh, I think the hexagons draw from the center, but we'll see. Let's take a look. That is huge. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I meant 10. Sure, I like that, and I'm thinking I'm going to set the stroke color as well, and I'm going to use my variable, the uh, skin color. I want to get rid of these uh, quotes, so you have to go behind them sometimes, it will fight you, because you don't want quotes when you're using a variable name. And it's going to know, zoop, oh, that's silver. Cool. I'm liking the look of this. I wanted the center of the polygon to be red, so I'm going to do fill. Right above the polygon, though, because I don't want this to impact other stuff. Red. Yep, I'm liking that. I strongly recommend, guys, once you finish a component, anything that you have changed, like I said, stroke weight, I change. I'm going to undo that at the bottom of this to, ooh, not no fill, uh, no stroke or set stroke to zero because it will get confusing if I move this around why the stroke weight is still around down here. And I mean, I can go ahead and show you what I mean, I guess. Let me do a rectangle down here. And I don't actually want this to have an outline. Right When we started, there was no stroke, so I'm just going to default once I'm done with something to quote-unquote clean up and do no stroke. Cool. Um, obviously, I'm not going to want red here because I changed the fill to red. So I'm going to again do fill, and then I'm going to tilt this off. I have to fight it to get behind the quotes. Delete, delete. Uh, and skin color. Okay. I want this space to be larger, so if I look at rectangle, X, Y, and remember, rectangles draw from the top corner, so 100, 100 is right here, as you can tell, and that's the top corner for X and Y, and 200, 200 is the size. And Y, I think I'm going to push it down. Yes, I like that. Boom. All right. So this is the face, and I'm going to go ahead and do the neck as wheel. And for the neck, uh, I want it kind of centered here. So let's see, Y down here is like, it's kind of weird, guys. Keep in mind, zero Y is way up here. And to go down the screen, you have to increase Y. So I think Y will be like 350. This is huge. I don't want it 50. 50 is a better size for me, I think. Uh, let me just, yep, width and height. And remember, I actually have this variable small to use for this, which makes it nice if I want to test out other size on multiple things at a time. Okay, I want mine a bit over, and I kind of want it centered, so probably like right here, and that looks like 175. Yeah, go Fred, go. Go Fred, go. I know you're chanting it with me. Okay, so I'm liking this. Let me, mm, what should we do next? The eyes. Just throw a comment here. Don't worry about this yellow. This just means I haven't made use of this yet. And we're going to do an ellipse for the eye. And so where do I want the eye? I kind of want it here. Now, ellipse are kind of odd. They draw from the center as opposed to the rectangles that draw from the top left. So right here is probably where I'm wanting it. And so that looks like maybe 125x, uh, 175y. I'm going to give that a shot. And 400, 400 is huge. I want it to be 
50-50, I believe. We'll try small. Ah, and we can't see it because it's the same color. We haven't reset the fill. So I'm going to do fill right here. And I'm going to use my features color, right? The facial features. Boom. And boop, boop. Perfect. I like that a lot. Um, I need another eye right here. Kind of finagle this. I think it's going to be 275 if I center it. Let's see. Bam. That is also looking good. All right. So now I'm headed to the nose. And by headed, I mean I'm starting the nose. Boom, boom. Um, I was going to do my nose also as, a, well, as a rectangle. And then I want it kind of in the center here. So, oh, it's going to mm, probably actually here. So maybe I'll start it at, uh, it looks like X and Y, 175. And then keep in mind, this is width and height. And I can be sure of that by looking right over here. And it tells me width and height because I'll forget sometimes. Um, I'm going to have it be smaller, I think 50, which would be small. And then uh, maybe 100 for testing purposes. Ooh, that is a big schnoz. Um, no, I think that's fine. Now, the nose size, remember, I was randomizing the height of the nose. So I'm going to do bloop, this and see. And it should be different if this is working each time. That's super fun. And I might even do it more than this. Like, what if I did 25? I would like it to be. Oh, that is an itty bitty nose. Okay. I think I'm going to do like 50 to 150. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> oh, the nose is going to run into the mouth. I kind of think that's fun though. So I'm going to leave that. Uh, cool. All right. So that's working as well. Uh, huh. I think that's all I need for my news. Yep, that was easy. Now, again, guys, I would keep together the items that you expect, just in case you move this around. So the fill is already set to yellow here, obviously. I'm going to still, right above my nose, so I can keep track, do this. If I don't do this and say later on, I'm like, you know, I want the nose uh, to be drawn on top of something else, and I just, you know, move it up here. Well, now my nose doesn't even have a color. So I, it's a really good idea to keep the uh, expected, oh, now I lost it. To even uh, restate necessary uh, features, even if they're existing already. So I like doing it. I think it's good practice. You don't have to, but I recommend it. All right, so that's the nose and now mouth. For my mouth, I was going to do an arc, which I think is. Now, this is a whole bunch of numbers. Don't let it scare you. You might want to hit run at first just to see it, and it looks terrifying. So what this is, is the arc is x, y at first. And so I'm going to just try and just center it and see where that gets me. 200, 200. Then the arc is width and height. So I'm going to go much smaller just to see what this looks like. And I'll leave that 0 to 90 for now. Oh, well, now it's even hard for me to see it. So I might do a fill temporarily to make sure I know what's going on here. Uh, uh, well, everything else is yellow, so that's not going to help. Okay. Oh, and so it's a 90 degrees right now. So I think I'll do, let me double this and see what we get. Yeah, perfect. And I want to move it down. I was going to do the mouth like here-ish. And uh, it looks like Y is 300 there. Let's give that a shot. <laughs> I really love my nose. Okay. Um, and I think I'm actually going to cover color the mouth red. Yeah. Go, robot, go. Oh, I forgot the pupils and the eyes. So I'm going to use a point. Where are my eyes? Here and here. And when I do this, I'm not going to see anything because I have no stroke. So I'm going to now again use the stroke block down here. So stroke weight, um, 10 I think is good. Maybe 20, let's try. And then let's see. 
I'm going to do blue eyes, stroke color. Whoop, I broke something. Oh, I can just write the stroke. Woo, and this, I need to do no stroke after this, otherwise things go crazy. Oh, I wonder if this is happening under the nose right now. So I'm just going to set this, guys. It's really nice if you ever get super lost. 5-5, five, five, see if it exists. It does exist, so it must have been under the nose. All right, I think I'm going to want it like here-ish, which I bet is like 130, 185 maybe. Perfect. And then over here, yeah, 275 by 175 probably. Or 185. Yes, that is looking good to me. And I think, ta-da, that's my robot. So things to keep in mind. Uh, one thing I want to highlight is sometimes students are resistant to variables. The super nice thing is when I was building this, I was like, you know, I don't know, maybe I want uh, to see everything larger. And so I can just real easily set this to 100, boom, boom, and see what that looks like on all things at once, rather than having to go through and change every time the variable is used. I could also do that with the uh, features color, right? Maybe I wanted to try purple and see if I like that more. So it lets me be able to easily play with this and keep track of what is going on. And make sure to remember the rubric while you're doing this. You want four variables, four different types of shapes. You want to have a random number used in there as well. Uh, but yeah, draw something cool. I'm looking forward to these. Go, Fred, go! Onward.